Say hey, everybody. Welcome back to So Rare FP. I'm Alex Hooper, ready for a little bit of a recap in MLB. Going to take a look at some outperformers. Going to take a look at, you know, maybe some trading strategy based on guys who might be overperforming and maybe some buy low candidates. Uh, yeah, we're we're in the middle of everything, man. We got playoffs starting tomorrow. We got, uh, we're two weeks in here. We got ETH rewards starting in MLB. A lot of exciting things going on. I have not had the time to do anything outside of, you know, your uh, live before locks. And uh, I've been trying to get things ready for the playoffs and NBA. And I've just been, you know, playing MLB. So, um, like I said, we're going to do some of those things. We're going to check out some of the rewards. And then we're going to look at um, overperformers, underperformers, buy low, sell high, that sort of stuff. Talk about you know, some trading strategies here. Um, yeah, we'll do NBA a different day. Um, I talked about it a little bit on Live Before Lock last time, and uh, not a lot of strategy, I don't think. Just grab guys who are going to play. That's that's kind of the thing. All right, so let's head over to the rewards. Um, ETH rewards delayed our card rewards this week, um, which stunk. I have, you know, four playable cards at least, but uh, we got our ETH rewards, so we're happy. And I won an ETH reward. Very happy about it. 27th Unlimited Pro, five bucks. Yeah, just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of ETH, but we will take it. All right. Let's look at the comment. Tier three. <laughs> Would have loved that to be Julio. That is not someone I'm going to keep. I can almost guarantee that. I'm going to drop this in my gallery really quick. Definitely don't need to do this now, but I am. Um. <laughs> yeah, we'll figure that out later. All right. Tier 5 NL Limited. Tanner Scott, perhaps. Andrew Nardi. All right. Sure, that's a that's a person. He's got a nice mustache. Fantastic stuff there, guy. Love a good uh love a good tier five. Let's look at another tier five. Is it gonna be Andrew Nardi? It's definitely gonna be a reliever. Taylor Clark, alright. <laughs> alright, that was the fun stuff. That was the fun stuff. All right. A couple of tier threes. Let's have some fun. Oh, you're kidding me. Oh, he's like my second highest projected guy. I almost bought him. Oh, God. This would have been the week. You're kidding me. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. Oh. Oh, I'm so, I'm so sad. Let's see. I had Tyler O'Neill was my third highest <laughs> my third highest projected player in baseball this week. Wilson Contreras was my seventh highest projected player in baseball this week, and they will fall right back to the bottom of that line. Um, now that they're not in cores, they're playing in cores this week. Oh, I'm sick. I'm absolutely gutted. Damn. Damn. All right, uh, so let's see. I'm definitely going to sell Contreras, or I'm going to put Contreras on the market. So let's take a look at that. Oh, my God, my heart is broken. Ugh. All right. <laughs> oh. That stinks. Uh, I was hoping for ETH rewards, and we got them, and uh, I get two guys who I absolutely should have played. Oh. Oh, no. 
No, no, no. All right. Well, let's go. I'm I'm just I'm shook. Let's go to sorter data. Let's see what Contreras is looking at here. Contreras rare. Ah, eh, 0.03. That's pretty good. Uh, might have been because it was this week. Point oh three, Man. All right. So we're going to put that on the market. So let's see. Normally I would do a seller hold here. Um, and I would show you, you know, my, my sheet. So I'll show you the sheet and show you where the decision making comes in. So I'm not just making it and going with it. So generally what I do is I will go to my composite rankings and say like, all right, what can I, what's this guy going for on the street? Let's zoom a little bit so you can actually see. So, Contreras, there he is. All right, if I scroll over here, so I don't know. I have a value on him. I just have the wrong stuff. All right, I'm not looking at the right place. All right, so yeah, 0. 0.32, like I said. Um, actually, decent value because the guys around him aren't great. But we're looking at middle infielders here. Is there a middle infielder up here who I could get for less? Yes. Javi Baez right there. He's not going to sit every day. Uh, Arias, I don't know where he qualifies at this point, if he's a second baseman or not. Um, let's see. Keep going up. Keep going up. Keep going up. Point two eight. Who's that? Rowdy Tellas. That's not the same thing. Cronenworth. All right. So point three two. Anyone else? Two six for Benintendi. Not the same position. Cattell Marte. Does he play? Is he second base eligible in the new cards? I'm pretty sure I already have a Cattell Marte, but. Yes, he is. So, like, I could go get Cattell Marte, and he's projected for for more points. So that's normally how I do my rewards. Um, unless, you know, there's a guy who I might want to stack. Like, let's see. Athlete Rutschman is not going to be that guy. Here's O'Neal right here at .035. You know, and I could go up and get Benintendi if I wanted. Um, I really would have just liked to play O'Neal and uh, Contreras. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, so yeah, um, I'm 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 gonna hold O'Neill. He's not a horrible prize. Um, man, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll list them both. You know, um, because I got a little heat in the tank. I don't know. I'll make the decision. I'm definitely gonna list Contreras. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna do it right now. Um, just because I don't want catchers. I'm I'm never going to play catchers. It just doesn't make sense. He's going to sit every couple of days. I know he can DH. He's a good hitter. Would have been great in cores. Actually, he's played a couple of days in a row. No, he didn't play. He didn't play on the fifth, so. Yeah, it's all right. Um, boy. Would have been great. They would have slotted right into my rare pro lineup. That would have been pretty. So, okay. So I wanted to talk about some... Some of the Statcast darlings early on. Um, if you are unfamiliar with Statcast, um, this is where the information that actually matters is. Uh, I know I did way back at the start of MLB, way back. I did a you know like a cheat codes video, and I broke down some of the things that matter and some of the things that don't matter when you look at baseball stats and projections and stuff. And like batting average, eh, it doesn't really tell you anything. It's results based. That, even you know OPS, it's result based. What you want to look at is how guys are hitting the ball. Mechanically, are they doing the right things? Are they doing the things that generally result uh, in in base hits over a long period of time? And generally, what you'll find is there are guys who are you know doing those things, hitting the ball well, hitting the ball hard have the correct amount of loft on the ball. And uh, I, I don't know what my dog is doing here. Making a lot of noise. Good Lord. Uh, <laughs> he's like 
digging into the, the damn closet. Are you all right, buddy? You got the itches? Jeez, oh, Pete. This has been a time. This has been quite a time on camera. So, yeah, uh, stack ass stuff. So let's take a look at some of the guys who are, like, popping um, currently. And uh, I'll kind of talk a little bit about is it sustainable? Is it uh, indicative of some positive things to come? So here you go. So here is the StatCast expected page. You'll see Brian Reynolds right here at the top. I'm pretty damn sure he is leading uh, in so rare points on the season. He's got to be. Um, just going to look. Just going to look. I'm pretty sure over the last 10. It's 2022. Last 15. That's plate appearances. All right. That's, this isn't helping at all. Can't lose it. Anyway, I, I'm sure he is. It doesn't matter. So he's, he is the leader in quality of contact. So this is what you want. X Woba. Fantastic. Um, we are early in the season to where, you know, a certain amount of play, uh, plate appearances doesn't really tell you anything. Like, I'm not going to read a ton into Joey Gallo other than, you know, he's hitting the ball hard, and that's what you want to see out of him. That's very exciting. I'm actually going to move the qualified number here up to 25 to weed out some of the lower guys. So, over here on the left are all the players. I mean, Matt Chapman's been hitting the ball like crazy. Um you see here, though, Freddie Freeman is actually, his actual realized Woba is 485, and Paul Goldschmidt is 424, whereas this is the expected number, so this is what you expect them to be hitting. Brian Reynolds is actually technically underperforming his his uh, expected Woba, despite, you know, hitting bomb after bomb after bomb. So if you turn this around, you're going to see these are some of the worst hitters in baseball. On the opposite end, Marcus Semyon has not been hitting the ball well at all. He and Manny Machado have actually been the two worst quality of contact guys in baseball. And their WOBAs are actually way higher. It looks like they're actually doing things. Like, they're both slugging 359. Machado has a batting average over 300 and on 29 balls in play. He actually should just not be benefiting. So, you can look over here at the difference. Um... So here are the guys who are most outperforming. Bryson Stott not really hitting the ball that well, but he's got a 422 Woba. He's got a nine-game hit streak. He's got a 429 batting average, 514 slugging percentage, but he really should not be. Um, Yohan Moncada, same sort of thing. Not as crazy as Stott, but he's slugging quite a bit. Um, the Marlins, Arias and Garrett Cooper are actually overperforming a little bit, but you look here, Arias is actually hitting the ball well. Adam Duvall is overperforming by a lot, but it doesn't matter because he's still slugging the ball like crazy. That's a very high x I think it was like sixth or something like that. So just because he's overperforming doesn't mean anything because his actual quality of contact is really good. Um, plays in a great ballpark for you know a right-handed power hitter. So he uh, has been doing very well. And then he broke his wrist. And now he's out indefinitely, which is not ideal. Uh, things going from bad to worse for Red Sox fans. So so that's how you play around with this. So I wanted to look again at Brian Reynolds. You expect his price to have been going up. Um, let me show you this entire screen. Are you ready for this? Boom. Here's the, the infinite me. Um, so we're going to go over here. So Brian Reynolds, the question now is, do you sell? So like, here you go, up, 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 up. Uh, he's he's going for a ton. Rare, kind of come back down to earth. Honestly, if you could get him for 0. 0.64 right now, which I could if I sold both of my guys. Um. Yeah, he's on the up. I, I actually just got an offer uh, from Bob for it. Someone undercut me. 
So if you move this back, I don't know if it'll pop up because he was part of a trade, but I basically valued him at like 0.18 before the season. He was a guy I really liked. Now he's popping off, and yeah, someone undercut me. So I'm going to undercut them back. Um, there's mine from Predictology. But basically I listed him for like six times, you know, what what I wanted or, you know, six times what I bought him for and uh, just trying to catch lightning in a bottle there. So if you look at him, there's a decision to be made. If you go back to his scores or, his you know, his price graph, like if you got him in here, you can sell him for 3x currently and spend that elsewhere. The thing is, he's still hitting the ball better than anyone in baseball. And these sorts of things, you know, like he's not, his quality of contact is not going to be a 578x Woba all season. Like if you go back to 2022, Aaron Judge, yeah, Aaron Judge came in at 463. So this would be a Judgean season plus, you know, 25. 20, 15 percent, something like that. So obviously he's not going to settle in there. But could he settle into this, you know, 380, 378 range and just put up those numbers in a contract year? Absolutely he could. So is selling him really worth it? Um, I haven't looked at the rest of season projections and see if they've changed for our guy Brian Reynolds here. Um, yeah. Yeah, he's pretty high now, actually. He is the 27th highest projected player in baseball. So if you wanted to flip him for that .32, you could move up technically to I mean, Marcus Semyon, who's doing the opposite. But Kyle Schwarber, uh, Francisco Lindor, Bobby Witt, these are guys, uh, if you go all the way up to Rafael Devers, who is actually the 6th highest projected hitter rest of season, you could do that. And if you need, you know, a corner infielder and you have a solid outfield, that might be something that makes a lot of sense for you. Because, um, I mean, Devers is projected still for 200 more points over the course of the season. And it's a long season, and the way that guys perform, you know, it might work out over time. Um, that's the type of move you would make for Brian Reynolds. Uh, what did we say he was going for? His last three rares? Is that up in the point one? Yeah, they were. Like, if you could sell him for this, if you bought him down here and you could sell him for this, then you're looking really good. Um, the fact that he's listed here is bananas, and I kind of want to run out and grab one. Um, but for point one, I mean, Devers is point one one eight. Paul Goldschmidt's point one one six. Marcus Semyon again point oh seven. Kyle Schwarber point oh nine three. Alex Bregman, 0.069, and then you get a little savings on top. So, I mean, there are opportunities to swap Brian Reynolds for something better. I have two of them, actually, and it might make sense for me to flip one, especially if it means I can go up and get a rare. Um, but I've been playing in every lineup, and wasting is super rare, honestly. So, so there's a thought. Let's try and find someone who's underperforming here. All right, Josh Naylor, Giancarlo Stanton... And then there's Goldschmidt and Freeman. Let's, let's take a look at the higher side of this. Let's take a look at Goldschmidt and Freeman and see if their prices are indicative of this sort of thing. So not the rares. Limiteds are holding steady. So not a huge buy low opportunity here, at least not yet. I imagine Freddie Freeman is similar. I mean, you are at this at this level. You are buying very low. You are buying very very low here, um, on a limited level. That's great. S holding strong in rare as well, even though he is projected to be the third highest score. Third highest score. Third third highest score in the entire year. You could buy him now. You can look for a dip if you want, but like because. He is projected to you know, start hitting. This might be the best opportunity to buy. Um, let's look at a guy like Stanton. Are there any giant underperformers? I mean, I guess it's really just these guys because these, these have been the unluckiest guys. The fact that Bo Bichette is on this list is nuts. He's leading the league in hits. Kyle Tucker has been underperforming. 
Um, okay, so let's look at Stanton. Holding strong, nothing to see here. It's not really a price I would pay for him. What about limited? Yeah, kind of the same thing. All right, so we're not seeing dips yet. We're not deep enough into the season where we're seeing guys go down in price because they're struggling. Generally, you're going to see that over, you know, like 30, 40 games once the the media starts talking about it. All right, so here's a guy who's actually sunk because Josh Naylor, um, I'm not running out to buy him. His rare price is actually up. So, yeah, I, there are guys who you could definitely sell high. Let's see, any other... Anyone else massively overperforming? Adam Duvall. Luis Robert is probably a guy you can make a nice buck on. Um, Matt Olson is a guy I like. It's a, that's an interesting case, though. So let's see if he's risen, because I know he started hot. There was a narrative about it. Definitely up. Definitely, He was one of my favorite values. He was like 0. 0.1, something like that. Yeah, 0. 0.121. These guys saw that value. Zuby. Spy Alice and he flipped them, so they caught him early, and then you you got the new the mitts. Um, there you go, in limited. He's up, 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 down a little bit, um, but this is if you bought in here, if you've been holding that all you, you could sell him. Um, at the same time, I don't think there are better values out there at that price point, unless you can go up. I mean, yeah, I mean if you can give Freeman. If you can get Freeman below this, I would still do that, unless you have a Ronald Acuna to pair him with or uh, Austin Riley, even though you're going to have to play one extra hitter. Um, anyone else? Who's the other one? Duvall. Duvall's price is probably crashing. Um, Luis Robert, very popular. He's back from injury. Rising a little bit. Yeah, and then his limiteds are way up. So Luis Robert, if you bought him in here, you can t get about 2x. So that's how you use StatCast um, to kind of predict who you can maybe make a buck on and you won't won't really hurt you that bad. Also, you know, find guys to, to buy a little low. Um, so let's take a look at pitchers really quick. Um, this is only a two-start sample size. Again, like even these guys, it's too, too early to like really buy in. Pitchers, it's probably going to be a little bit, you know, different. So here are great quality of contact guys, all relievers. We're going to push this up to 25 a lot, but here are guys who have, you know, thrown a lot of games. So Drew Rasmussen looks like a great buy right now. A guy that I know a lot of um, people at Sora FP were really high on. He has gone up a little bit, but I mean, that's still a very fine price. And then, yeah, he's definitely gone up here as well. And then the other one was Luis Castillo. I mean, if you can get him down here, that's great. But this is too much for him. His price has not gone up. It's just that this one pushed it up. Who else we got? Nick Lodolo is another guy who's actually unlucky so far. Tyler Maley. Here's a great example. Great contact against very bad situation um going on against him so he is a perfect perfect buy low candidate we are still here where it's going up a little bit and this price is too darn high right now to buy limited still holding strong that price like that's peanuts for a guy who you could go out there and uh grab really quickly i'd love to get his super rare on the cheap if possible but so let's look at some other Let's see. Dustin May should be hitting or getting hit more. Alcantara, um, Brady Singer, and Mike Clevenger just look bad, period. D. Scalfani, I know, is a guy who's been getting a little bit of love. But let's see. Dustin May. Again, I don't know that I would make decisions on this. But Dustin May... Yeah, I mean, if you bought here, you definitely want to sell up here if possible, but it doesn't look like, you know, K-Lamp got him on the cheap. That was smart. Dude only does smart things. So, yeah, I don't know that these guys are 
guys I would be trying to move off of. Um, these guys, on the other hand, these are guys you could look to buy low on, maybe. Zach Wheeler. Perfect. You know, he's kind of the second guy now behind Aaron Nola, who's also on this list. Nice little bunch here. That is not a big price for Zach Wheeler. His price is kind of normalized. That's a fine price for a Zach Wheeler rare. Love that. So there you go. That's how you find these guys. I got a quick looking at my Ryan Reynolds, but um, even my guy Lucas Giolito, who I would almost guarantee has gone down because he just keeps getting smacked. He was already underpriced by my eye, and then, yeah, he's people are trying to get rid of him because. Not a lot of spin on that fastball. Oof. Yeah, people are just trying to unload him. So there you go. That's how you identify these types of players. Um, you head over to StatCast and you look at those things. I wanted to look at one more. Um, I wanted to look at teams really quick because there's some equity in using this as well. So I'm going to go to leaderboard. Da, da, da. Oh, here's another thing, too. Exit velocity and barrels. I mean, same sorts of guys. This is just how you identify who's really knocking the tar out of the ball. Okay, here we go. This is last season. Ooh, how did I find this? I was just looking at this. Huh. No, it's right there. Okay. Batters, team. All right. So, you go here, you look at quality contact. Guess what? The Rays, undefeated, have been great. Uh, they've played horrible teams, so there's not a ton to read into it. But um, stay away from these offenses. Surprise, the Dodgers. They're hitting the ball hard. They always do. On the flip side, if you look down here... By a gulf, Detroit is still historically bad. They were historically bad last year. They're still historically bad. You got a nice bunch of pretty bad offenses in here, but you know the the difference between let's say let's say here is the cutoff. The Royals at fifteen and Oakland, like, or even just let's let's do that let's say minnesota at 19 you could even come all the way down here to cincinnati at 21 these teams are teams like yeah if you have a good starter against any of these teams you're looking good although philly houston you expect them to bounce back so i would remove them from the conversation arizona was bad for a while i was kind of targeting them but definitely like if you play any of these two teams oakland and detroit they're just horrible um here you go who's yeah, so Cleveland is doing just about what you would expect. Same with Miami. Those are two kind of rough teams there. Um, Oakland's actually been better, <laughs> whereas, you know, Philly, sorry, Philly has been better, whereas Oakland has actually underperformed. Like, they have been hitting the ball well, and the park hasn't rewarded them. So, yeah, I would, again, target Oakland and Detroit. That's not really anything different. On the other side... Here are the matchups. So if you have a hitter stack, target Arizona, target Chicago, target, again, Oakland, target Washington. Toronto is interesting, but Detroit, this is how you use this. You want high quality of contact. So Arizona and Chicago especially, their pitching staffs have been bad. Um, it looks like... Uh, Arizona is actually getting lucky at this point. One of the luckier teams around their ballpark will do that. It suppresses runs. So there's stuff like that. But this is how you identify who you want to stack against, whether it's you know your pitchers or your hitters. This is how you identify lineups and pitching staffs that you want to target. So keep an eye on those stat cast numbers. They're, they're going to change. Um, again, we're not at like a really normalized, we're not at a, uh, you know, it's not, it's not fact yet. I'm on air, so naturally I'm going to forget the actual 
verbiage that I want. Predictive. There you go. It's not predictive yet. Um, but, I mean, it, Detroit's been bad. There is the whole sample size from last season. I think they actually got worse as a lineup. Um, so go after them. Oakland's not trying. We know that. So anytime Oakland or Detroit comes up on your upcoming games, whether it's a pitcher or a hitter, throw it at them. And then, so yeah, that's how you utilize StatCast. They're, they're Things that tell you when to sell, when to buy, stuff like that. And if you get into a groove of that early in the season, once that data starts to really start to be normalizing and uh, predictive, that was a, just an absolute train wreck of a sentence. Once things get predictive, once things normalize, then you can start making some really educated decisions. And generally, you know, the, the entire user base isn't going to be on board with a lot of this stuff. So... The best thing you can do with your gallery, if you have cards that you don't want, is you know sell when guys are hot, but you know their their ex woba isn't high. Like they're just getting lucky because people will see results and they chase results, and that's just a great way to you know up, update your bankroll, uh, get on a nice roll, and uh, make smart MLB savvy decisions like you know front offices would and there's a little more liquidity in our game and we can you know, really turn guys around fast and uh, we don't have a limited player pool to choose from. We can all have a certain amount of each guy. So you're able to get out there and make moves like that. And if you want to, if you want to upgrade your team, you can generally do that, especially with the rewards. If you win rewards and you don't think that they make sense or, you know, like Wilson Contreras, like, I'm not going to play him on, you know, three game game weeks because he's only going to play two games and stuff like that. Catchers or, you know, if you get a reward like Adam Duvall last week, if you won Adam Duvall and you kept him broken wrist aside, like you could still sell him for way more than he's going to be going for once he comes back down to earth. So those are the decisions you have to make. And, uh, yeah, you know, sometimes you want to chase guys at cores and then sometimes you win them and sometimes you win them. Uh, after lock, and you're very sad. You just immediately list them. So that's what I'm doing. But I'm I'm happy with the rewards. I, I'm very happy with the rewards. So I just wish I could have played them. But that's going to do it for me. Very happy to talk baseball. I'm so glad this stuff's here. Yeah, I'm getting back in the groove. So if it takes me a little while, especially until NBA, um, I apologize. But uh, drop anything you want to see me talk about in the chat. Any questions you have about the game, especially some of our new folks. Some of the people who have been around for a while uh, definitely, you know, drop some things that I haven't talked about, and I will. Um, but until next time, good luck. Good luck this midweek, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow for NBA Live Before Lock. Talk to you then.